All right, I was just uh, I was playing some uh, material on the Reality Revolution, uh, which is Brian Scott reading uh, Florence Scovel Shin's Law of Non-Resistance, and it's it matches what I've been saying uh, on my radio show for a long time now, uh, which is letting go of resentment, letting go of resistance is one of the key things. Uh, and accepting what is, is one of the key things that that will uh, move life forward or move life. If you, if you don't accept where you are now, you can't move, you don't have a place to move from. So that's that's grounding basically. You accept where you are now and then you can move from there in the direction you want to go. If you're not accepting where you are, you're not, you're not grounded. That's uh, that's the, the simplistic understanding that I've come to. Uh, quite profound, though, when you think about it. It's quite uh, insightful. Quite, uh, it's a different way of thinking about grounding. It's a very important, different way of thinking about grounding as well. And I've just that's just come out of my mouth when I started talking. So I'm quite happy with that. That's that's. I can stop now. If really I could stop now. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to set up Florence Scovel Shin again and see if we can't listen to a little bit of, of that. So let me share my screen if it's not already happening. It is already happening, so that's all right. So I had some bandwidth issues. earlier on, so I don't know how much of this is going to work, but we've got YouTube. And I quite I quite like Florence Scovel, she, and she's been popping up on channels uh, fairly regularly for a couple of years. And the, the explanations are simple, but they're very direct and they're addressing her, her examples and her explanations are very very much uh, aimed at people living a life so that's why I like it Florence Scovelshin has got some incisive things to say so let's see which one I was I was doing the law of non-resistance so let's go back to that I started from almost the beginning. This is on Brian Scott's channel. Have a lot of resistance going on. Sometimes you want money, but there's a part of you that's resisting getting money. And sometimes you want to find love. There is a part of you at the same time resisting even having any sort of love. If you're finding that you're just not manifesting what you want, that it never comes out quite right. Or sometimes you get the complete opposite. It's because there's some part of you that's resisting it in many cases. And what you resist will persist. It's not about that you recreate what you want. You create what you think about the most. So if you're thinking about what you're resisting, this can actually go against what you want. And Florence Scovel Shin talks about that in her book, The Game of Life. Psychologically speaking, resistance and resolution are at opposite poles. For resistance has fundamentally to do with not being able to or willing to deal with negative experiences in your life. And ultimately, your happiness really depends a lot more on handling than letting go of such adversities than it does self-protectively denying them or fighting against them. In addition, so does unwittingly holding on 
down to their associated feelings of hurt. So uh, you get attached to feelings you haven't resolved. But if you become aware of the exorbitantly high cost of not acknowledging and working through these feelings, you'll realize that heedlessly clinging to them hasn't at all contributed to your welfare. Quite the opposite. Long ago, the psychologist Carl Jung contended what you resist not only persists but will grow in size. In today's viewpoint is generally abbreviated to what you resist persists with many kindred paradoxical variants such as you always get what you resist. The complementary opposite of these similar experiences is another equally counterintuitive one which hints at the most valuable solution to such a quandary. It goes to get what you want, but get what links to on the almost mystifying expressions is the underlying notion that it's wise to accept what is. If only to put yourself in the best possible position to change it or to achieve the freedom to move past it and on to something else. And I'm not intimating that you adopt a defeatist attitude or that you give up in the face of what you seem inequitable or unjust, just that your resistance doesn't end up taking the form of resisting yourself. In any case, this will elaborate on what has become a prominent topic in, in popular psychology. And this was written so long ago at the very beginning of the New Thought movement. It's talked a lot about in the Law of Attraction. And while we talk about the Law of Attraction on my channel, it's much more complicated and advanced than that. And typically what you're resisting constitutes your reality, or rather your subjective sense of that reality, which may not be true. And you're shying away from it, complaining about it, resenting it, protesting against it, or doing battle with it. Without much self-realization, your energy, your focus is concentrated on not moving beyond what opposes you, not coming to terms with it. And unconsciously, your impulse toward resistance tends to be about avoiding the more hurtful or disturbing aspects of the experience. These adverse feeling states generally involve fear, and shame, pain, or feelings of being hopelessly out of control. Not only can resistance take many forms, it can also apply to many situations. For example, if you might have to do with revisiting a past trauma, which has never or could ever resolve on its own to bring back its into focus would at least initially seem to risk reviving old, profoundly distressful in emotions and to all the unpleasant physical sensations that accompany them. It's therefore only human to want to distance yourself from such a memory. For you'd naturally assume that reintroducing it into your consciousness could drum up the old pain and that you start creating a reality around it. And I'm going to say in this case, it's not necessarily true. And maybe even engender more of it to welcome such affliction back into your life. To dare to open yourself up to it all over again might seem almost masochistic. I had posted some stuff right now on my Facebook. Right, so what, what he's talking about there is courage, the courage to to look at past experiences and and reimagine them or go into them again and feel the experience and then let it go. Uh, very important concept. So to be able to let something go, you have to have actually felt it. You can't avoid feeling it. So it, it might hurt for, for four or five seconds and then you let it go. And uh, you don't have to go into it and stay in it. The The point about all of this new thought material is it's, it's kind of based on Platonism and some aspects of Hinduism. Uh, with Platonism, you're, you're within 
the context of the emotion that you feel. So you, you're not the emotion that you feel. You're, you're in a context that is that emotion, but you can move through it into a different context. So really the, the emotion is in the environment. It's not in the person. Uh, and, that, and that's an insight as well that's that's gonna help you through if you if you can get that then you can you can go through any emotion and come out the other side without without it affecting you all that much i mean you can you you might feel it and you might potentially get stuck in it but that doesn't make it your emotion it makes it makes it the background makes it the the environment that you that you're swimming in, uh, if we use that analogy for the water the water analogy for for emotion is is quite a reasonable one. So yeah, you're swimming around in in an environment of emotion, and you feel whatever context you're in within that environment, but it isn't you. It isn't you, and uh, that's an important thing to remember. And I think that's probably enough for the time being. Because that's two two things to think about, plus the Florence Scoville shame. So that's probably enough, uh, and we're up to ten, eleven minutes. So we'll do that for now.